Um, so this is a PowerPoint about Corpractal 16 uh, respirometers. Um, it was part that we would have done after we'd finished um, uh, aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And you can see there um, of equipment that's set up as a respirometer. It's um, got a piece of equipment in the middle here called a manometer. And you can see it's got a scale there so we can take some quantitative data. Um, we've got two boiling tubes, one here and one here. Um, and in the one bowling tube here, you're going to have whatever it is you're investigating. So it could be animals, it could be plants, it could be wood lice, it could be um, germinating peas. Um, in these tubes, we've got some soda lime here, um, and also here some soda lime. And um, what that's going to do is going to absorb the CO2 that's being released as these um, organisms respire. Um, and then in that manometer tube, I don't know if you can see there, that's not clear, but you've got a coloured liquid that's in there, and we're going to use that to look at the differences in volumes of the tube. This one here acts as a controlled tube. Okay, so we're gonna, that's basically what this video is about, how these work, uh, with a couple of exam questions at the end for you. Um, so um, here is a diagram of a respirometer, you can see here. It's not my diagram, it's somebody else's, and I quite like it, so that's why I borrowed it. Can't acknowledge it, because I don't know whose it is, but um, as it says there, you use these respirometers, these pieces of equipment, as a way of measuring rates of respiration. So you can also use them for working out something called an RQ value, which we're not going to worry too much about, but that, you, know, you know, you might come on to that, or you might meet them again, if you ever look at respirometers again, um, this is there for small organisms such as you would like, so you're germinating peas. And basically what you have here is this U-bend piece of glass we're here called a manometer. Um, with some capillary tubing here, capillary tubing here. And this has got a scale on it, so it allows you to measure the changes or the movement of the fluid over time. So you can work out a rate from that. Okay. Um, and we've got our experimental tube on one side, we've got our control tube on the other side. And the important thing about this to note, the control tube, it contains glass beads here. And these glass beads will be the same mass as whatever you've got in this tube here. So here's this wood lice. So these glass beads will be the same mass as the wood lice. Um, and then what you've got here is something like um, potassium hydroxide, or as I said, you could have soda lime here, and then all of that is to absorb the CO2. Okay. Um, now... There will be some sort of gauze platform or bag in which the wood lice or the organism will be suspended so they don't fall into that potassium hydroxide solution or they don't fall into the soda lungs. Obviously, that would be irritant. It will probably kill them. They'll drown. That's cruel. Not very ethical. Um, so we keep them out of the way by keeping a little glass bag. Okay. Um, and as I've said, the function of that potassium hydroxide or the soda lime is to absorb the CO2 because what's going to happen is these little organisms here are going to be respiring. As they're respiring, they're removing the oxygen from in here and they're reducing the volume. If you didn't absorb the CO2, all that would happen is they would they would um, absorb the oxygen, absorb the oxygen, and then release the CO2. So you would get no change in volume. Uh, so you'd get no change in the volume in here. So you'd get no change in the colored liquid that's flowing through here. And that's kind of defeats the point of the object, really. So you've got to remove your CO2. Um, there is a little screw clip here, usually. It could be a three-way tap, um, and that allows you to let some you know, air in so you don't suffocate your little wood lice. Um, and over here, you usually have a syringe, and you can use that for resetting your equipment again. You can draw it up and whatnot, and it will just reset the whole equipment. You'd have to dismantle it all, basically. Okay. So, so there you go. Um, and then there's a the syringe. Okay, so you use that to equate, uh, to equilibrate, equilibrate, <laughs> equilibrate the levels of coloured liquid in there. And obviously let them fair in there. Okay, so... Um, the air pressure is going to change within this tube here. As I said, they're going to absorb oxygen and they're going to release CO2 as they respire. The CO2 is going to be absorbed by the um, potassium hydroxide here. Okay. Um, and then the total, as it says there, the volume in the experimental tube will be reduced. And that means the air will be drawn up sort of through here. And that will push the level of that liquid up towards the left hand side of the U-tube. We can measure where it is on the on the um, scale there at the start. We can leave it for a set amount of time and measure it again. And then you can use that to work out a rate. Okay? So it says the manometer is fluid is pushed towards the experimental tube. The distance can be measured from the scale. Okay, so we measure it here. Um, and we can use this equation here. If we wanted to, to measure the volume of oxygen, so you've got sort of um, using pi, using the internal radius of the manometer there, and you use the distance moved by the fluid. Sometimes they ask you to do that. Um, there's a question in your aerobic, uh, your aerobic respiration pack that, that does that, so it's maybe worth having a look at. And then you've got your control tube on this side here. Remember, the control tube is 
basically showing you that it is the actions of these little wood lice here that are causing the change, not because you've got potassium hydroxide in here, um, but it's these little animals that are causing the change because you keep everything else the same apart from you swap the wood lice for just plain glass beads. Okay, It shows you it's a living process, as it says there. Now, there are different types of respirometers. Okay, So this is a more simple one, and this is what we would have actually have used. So what you've got here, you've only got the one boiling tube, You've still got your soda lime or your potassium hydroxide. Um, you've still got your little animals suspended. You've got a syringe here to reset it with a three-way tap. Um, and then you've got a pipette. You've got your coloured liquid in there and you've got your scale. Okay, So just like the other one we looked, you've got your soda lime to absorb the CO2. Um, you've got your gauze to stop them from dropping in. Um, ox uh, organs are going to respire and they're going to take oxygen up from the um, atmosphere in that little tube there and they're going to be releasing CO2 to be absorbed here. There's going to be a drop in the volume there. A little blob of colour liquid is going to sort of trundle along here. And then we can use that. Um, we can measure the volume changes. We can measure the, we can measure the change or uh, we can work out volumes if we want to. Okay. Um, and the actual equipment that you would use was there. So that would have been the setup that we would have had. Um, the most trickiest part of the whole thing is to get that little blob of colour into the tube um, when you get it all set up. Um, that's the most problematic part. But again, we've got soda line there. There's the gauze where I would have went, would have gone because Di went and collected some. Never mind. I've got a syringe here so we can reset the equipment with a three-way tap to let some air in so we don't suffocate our little um, wood lice. So that's what we would have done, and we would have um, looked at the different temperatures. I'm not going to tell you how to do that because exam questions coming up, but we would have looked at changes in temperature basically and how that affected the rate of respiration. And remember, we're using living organisms, so when you're answering questions about this, think about what you're writing. You're not going to put living organisms into boiling water at 80 degrees, are you? You're going to kill them. So you're probably not going to go very high because you don't want to harm your um, little organs because it's not ethical, is it? Um, anyway, so... Um, Another type of respirometer here, very, very basic respirometer. Um, and above there, we've got the more sort of manometer that we've seen at the start of the video. And here's the more basic one. And it really is a basic one. It's literally a boiling tube, some soda lime, a little mesh to keep the um, little wood lice safe, um, bung, capillary tubing there, drop of liquid. No graduations here. So I suppose you're going to use a ruler maybe to measure that. Um, and here, obviously, we've got this piece of equipment here. Now, what I want you to do now, you might want to pause the video this bit is I want you to think about the advantages and disadvantages of the three types of respirometer that we've looked at. Okay, so let me just go back so you can see them again. Um, so we had this one here, the setup that you would have used with a boiling tube and the graduated pipette. Um, and then we have these two setups here. Look at all the connections, look at all the joins here. Look, you've got one here, one here, there's a join there, a join there, there. Think about how that might affect it. And then here, think about what is the main advantage of this type of respirometer. And then... Uh, Conversely, what is the main disadvantage of this type of respirometer? Okay, so uh, pause now, have a go at that, and then we'll run through the answers. So, basic respirometers, the main advantage is they are very simple to use. Um, not many connections, so you don't lose, um, you know, you've got good seals, so you're not having gases leaking out accidentally affecting your results. Very, very simple. Um, don't require a lot, of, a lot of equipment. Most schools and colleges will be able to do that. Equally, they're very simple, and that's the main disadvantage. Um, also, there's no control tube alongside it. So you've got no control, and that's never a good thing in the experiment. And also, you can't reset it. So you, you have to kind of dismantle everything and restart again if you want to do that. Um, so the one that we would have used in the practical, so that would have been the one boiling tube with a graduated pipette, the main advantage of that is it's fairly straightforward. Um, you can reset it using your syringe and you can allow accurate measurements because you've got a scale you can use. So you can just sort of, um, time taken, you can work out right. Disadvantages, um, you should have a control tube because it doesn't have a control tube. Remember the control shows you that it is the um, wood lice or the germinating peas that is causing that change. It's not the fact that there's potassium hydroxide in it. It's not the fact that, I don't know, um, you've got a bit of gauze in there, or I don't know, whatever. It's showing you that it is the microorganisms that are, you know, micro, not organisms, the organisms that are causing that change. And then lastly, the ones, the manometer. Um, they've got their control tube. Um, you can reset them quite straightforward because you just need to use your syringe to do that. 
main disadvantage of them is they've got loads and loads of joins. So every time there's a join, there is the potential for you to lose some um, gas out of that join, which is going to affect your results. Also, they're slightly more expensive than the more straightforward models, and not everybody's got access to manometers. Um, and also, a thing to think about, it's very difficult to kind of get all that equipment into an ice bath or, you know, squash it into a water bath, something like that. So it's problematic. It's tricky. Now, um, we need to think about, though it's not specifically on the spec, you need to kind of understand what happens when a plant respires anaerobically. Um, you've done humans, so we talked about glycolysis occurring. So we had a six carbon compound glucose in glycolysis splitting into two, three carbon pyruvates. That would then go off to Lincoln, Krebs and electron transport chain normally. If there is no oxygen, so we've got no oxygen, um, what happens is uh, NADH or a reduced NADH is oxidized back into um, NAD and that hydrogen is added to the pyruvate and you form a lactic acid, okay? And that can build up in the muscle tissues and so on and so forth. In plants, you will notice exa exactly the same process here, except pyruvate becomes ethanol and CO2 is lost. So when plants respire anaerobically, they release CO2 into the atmosphere. Now that is gonna have an effect on your uh, respirometer. So if you've got seeds respiring anaerobically and they may be covered in oil or something to enable that to happen, don't have access to oxygen basically, um, they're gonna be respiring away in there and as they do so, they are gonna be releasing CO2. Okay, so they're not taking any oxygen out of the atmosphere because they're respiring anaerobically, but they're putting CO2 back in here. This is filling up with CO2. So what's gonna happen, the CO2 is gonna travel here and the volume is gonna push down and you're gonna get an increase this way towards B if you don't have potassium hydroxide there. If potassium hydroxide is there, that's gonna absorb the CO2. So there's gonna be no change, okay? So here you can see, um, if the, as they respire, they produce CO2. This is absorbed by the potassium hydroxide. There's no change in the colour liquid. It doesn't move anywhere um, because any gas that's been released as they respire is being absorbed by the potassium hydroxide. But, and they like to do this exam questions, they like to change potassium hydroxide for water and say to you, what happens now if that's water there? Well, um, these will be producing CO2 because they're respiring anaerobically little seeds. Okay, you'll get an increased volume in here, which means the liquid will push, the gases will push the liquid this way, and you'll get an increase towards B here. Okay, because of all the extra sort of CO2 in here, it's going to push up and round and round and through. Uh, so let's have a look at the exam question. So exactly the same setup as you would have used here. You've got your graduated scale here in millimeters. Um, you've got your little coloured liquid there. You've got your little animals happily respiring away. You've got potassium hydroxide here. So that'll be absorbing any CO2. So this is just three investigations uh, using this apparatus. They use glucose here as a respiratory substrate. So that's what they're respiring. Everything else were kept constant. All variables were kept constant. Um, they were carrying out anaerobic, so no oxygen and aerobic oxygen. Now we know that when animals respire anaerobically, they don't release CO2, they just respire anaerobically. So question. The table below shows the three investigations that were carried out and the results of investigation number one. So uh, anaerobic, there was no potassium hydroxide. Liquid, coloured liquid did not move. Okay. Why is that? So if they're respiring anaerobically, they're not releasing any CO2. They're just, you know, it's, it's getting converted into lactate. So therefore, there was no oxygen being removed because it's anaerobic and there was no CO2 being added. So the colour liquid stayed where it was. Okay. We don't know about these, but if we're respiring aerobically and there's no potassium hydroxide, we can assume that if we're respiring aerobically, they're taking oxygen out, they're putting CO2 back. So I would think we're looking here. Okay. Aerobic, pres aerobic with um, potassium hydroxide present, so they're taking oxygen out. CO2 is being absorbed, so we're going to move to the left. This is going to be a decrease. Okay, let's look at the question. Oh, I'll just answer the question. Um, so, place table, complete table of place of course in one box for each of the investigations, two and three, to show the response of the coloured liquid. Um, and then explain why the coloured liquid did not move in the investigations. I've kind of answered those. Uh, so, yes, it's there, and yes, it's there. Okay, because remember, if we're spying aerobically, we're taking oxygen out and putting CO2 back in because there's no potassium hydroxide to absorb it. Okay, so that CO2 is just going to be all um, going to be swapped. So the kind of liquid's not going to move, make no difference in volume. Whereas here, when we're spying aerobically and we've got the potassium hydroxide, 
O2 is being absorbed. Um, CO2 is being absorbed, so it's all going to move up to the left. And then there you go. So this is anaerobic now. O2 is absorbed, no CO2 is produced. So there's no change in volume or pressure, so the liquid does not move. Um, since for each of the six carbon glucose respired, there's um, two, three carbon lactates. So you're kind of telling them what you know what happens in anaerobic respiration and getting yourself some marks, which is nice. Now, something for you to do. So I want you to have a go at this question here, and I want you to have a go at this question here. Okay, let's have a quick look at this one. Uh, so again, we've got our manometer, and I think we can assume we've got a control tube here, though it doesn't show it to us. I suppose we shouldn't assume, but we will. Potassium hydroxide's in here. We've got our little... Um, Organisms respiring glucose, so they're carrying out respiration, releasing their CO2 that's being absorbed here. Um, and it's all oh, screw clip open, screw clip closed. So here, the screw clip. So if that's open, that's going to let air in, remember. It's going to let air in if it's open and it stops air coming in when it's shut. Uh, potassium hydroxide is replaced with water and screw clip is closed. So if there's no, this is water, so there's no potassium hydroxide, but that's closed. So what's going to happen to the liquid then? Some of the answer. And in this one, we've got um, effective temperature on the rate of respiration in germinating seeds. That diagram shows how the respirometer that was used. Um, and we've got a tube here and a tube here. This tube, we've got our seeds germinating and they're in some sort of container. We've got potassium hydroxide there to absorb the CO2. We've got a manometer, we've got a syringe to reset. We've got a little screw clip. And then we've got a big old empty tube with nothing in it. Hmm. Devise an investigation using this respirometer to obtain valid data to show the effect of temperature. So you're going to want to say how you're going to change that temperature. You want to going to maybe give some ranges. I would say five because that's a good figure. Remember, you're using living organisms, so you're not going to go too high. So think about that. You're not going to put it on like 60, are you? You're going to kill them. So think about that much lower, but you still want five. And then rate of respiration. So what you're going to need to do to be able to measure a rate what, you, what do you need to know? And then, of course, you probably ought to mention this big old empty tube here. What are you can do about that? Can't leave that like that. Um, so, uh, answer those two questions for me. So, this question here and this one here. Pop them in an email to me, please. Um, and so, the next one is going to be on the heart, and I'll give you the answers to these questions at the start of the heart one. Um,